Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 23rd of August. Floods due to heavy rains batter parts of India and Pakistan. Hundreds of people affected. Pakistan court issues show cause notice to former PM Imran Khan in contempt case for threatening judge. And Bangladesh to cut school officers to save power. And now for all the details, floods triggered by unusually heavy monsoon rains have wreaked havoc in parts of India and neighboring Pakistan, overwhelming thousands of people while authorities struggle to provide relief. The extreme weather pattern in South Asia has become more frequent and environmentalists warn that climate change could lead to ever more serious disasters. Incessant rains in past three days have flooded many low-lying areas across India, affecting normal life in the country. As torrential rainfall batters central Madhya Pradesh state, dam gates were opened in Bhopal city on Tuesday to release extra water while rivers flowed near the danger mark. A flood situation also emerged in Madhya Pradesh, Vidisha district due to heavy rain and people were being shifted to safer places by authorities. Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivra Singh Chauhan conducted an aerial survey of the district and assured people of relief and compensation. The Regional Meteorological Department has forecast heavy rains in many parts of the state for the next three days. Meanwhile, several houses in Kendrapara city of eastern Odisha state were inundated by flood waters. The rain have overwhelmed hundreds of villages, sweeping away houses and leaving residents stranded across several parts of Odisha, while rescue crews have been racing to evacuate survivors. In neighboring Pakistan, flash floods caused by unusually heavy monsoon rains have killed at least 783 people over the last two months. With most deaths in the impoverished Balochistan and Sindh provinces, the National Disaster Management Authority said on Monday. Pakistan Meteorological Department has predicted more rain wind and thunder showers with few heavy falls in Sindh, southern Punjab, south and northeastern Balochistan in the coming days. And India's Foreign Secretary Vinay Quatra on Tuesday held a bilateral meeting with his counterpart from Bhutan, Ambassador Pema Chodin in New Delhi, and both the sides agreed to work together towards strengthening their close and unique ties. The meeting comes as Bhutan is grappling with the effects of soaring oil and grain prices due to Russia-Ukraine war as well as with the continued impact of COVID-19 pandemic. And moving on, India in an apparent jibe at China, the UN Security Council on Monday cautioned against any double standards on the issue of combating terrorism and common security. The remarks by the top Indian diplomat at the UN came in the backdrop of ongoing India-China border standoff and Beijing's move to block India's attempts to sanction Pakistan-based terrorists. India's permanent representative to the UN, Ruchira Kamboj, on Monday in an apparent jibe at China at the UN Security Council, cautioned against any double standards on the issue of combating terrorism and emphasized that any coercive or unilateral action that seeks to change the status quo by force is an affront to the principle of common security. The remarks came as over the past two months China has blocked moves by India at the UN to designate Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba leader Abdul Rahman Makki and jaish e mohammed Deputy Chief Abdul Rauf Azhar as global terrorists by using a technical hold. The Monday's UNSC meeting was convened at the behest of China, the President of the Security Council for August, against the backdrop of border standoff between India and China in Ladakh region, Kamboj said common security is only possible when countries respect each other's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Common security is only possible 
when countries respect each other's sovereignty and territorial integrity, as they would expect their own sovereignty to be respected. Common security is also only feasible when all countries stand together against common threats such as terrorism and do not engage in double standards while preaching otherwise. India has repeatedly accused China of violating agreements and protocols on border management by amassing troops along the line of actual control since 2020. Well, in news from Pakistan, a court in Pakistan on Tuesday issued a show cause notice to former Prime Minister Imran Khan on grounds of contempt and summoned him in his personal capacity on August 31st following a weakened speech in which he threatened police officers and a judicial magistrate. The Islamabad High Court on Tuesday issued a show cause notice to former Prime Minister and Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf Chairman Imran Khan and summoned him in his personal capacity on August 31st in a contempt case for passing controversial remarks regarding additional district and sessions judge Deba Chaudhary. The contempt issue is in addition to charges under an anti-terror law that police filed against Khan over what they said was a threat in a speech about his aide Shahbaz Gill, who faces sedition charges for inciting mutiny in the military. The issue could be a threat for Khan, who has been campaigning for new elections since being forced to step down this year, since a conviction would disqualify him from standing for election, legal experts said. Khan on Monday criticized what he said was the absence of the rule of law in the country. His political party, the Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf, has dismissed the accusations against Khan as being politically motivated, saying, they were being used to block him from leading anti-government rallies. Khan was the Prime Minister from 2018 until losing a confidence vote in Parliament in April. Moving on, scores of people in parts of Gilgit-Baltistan have been badly hit by flash floods triggered by heavy rainfall in recent days. Locals say the floods have damaged several houses, agricultural lands and fish farms, but there has been no relief from the government so far. Locals in Gilgit, Baltistan have expressed their anger towards the Pakistan government for ignoring them amid the flood situation which has left a trail of destruction in the illegally occupied region. Residents said several houses, schools, large tracts of cultivated land and fish farms have been destroyed due to the flooding and no government representative has visited their regions so far to provide any relief. और माली तौर पर जो प्राइवेट फिश फार्म्स थे वो बिल्कुल मिट चुके हैं कई जगहों में अभी शहर किला में रिसेंटली जो फ्लड आया उसकी वजह से वहां पर सरकारी समेत जो नजी फिश फार्म्स थे वो मुकम्मल तौर पर खत्म हो चुके हैं उनको बहुत बड़ा नुकसान हो चुका है गवर्नमेंट को इसका भी अजाला करना चाहिए लोकल्स आल्सो क्लेम दैट एज पार्ट ऑफ द ऑनगोइंग कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ सीपैक China Pakistan economic corridor both China and Pakistan are rampantly exploiting the natural resources with no policies in place to mitigate the effects of calamities locals have long blamed they have been at the receiving end of discriminatory policies of Islamabad while corruption and inadequacies in the system have turned the region backward and after a week-long stay, Chinese scientific research ship Yuan Wang-5 docked at Sri Lanka's Chinese-built port of Hambantota despite opposition from neighboring India left on Monday. The voyage of Yuan Wang-5, considered a spy ship, had become a matter of wide diplomatic attention as India expressed concern over its arrival in Sri Lanka. Chinese military survey ship Yuan Wang-5 that docked at Sri Lanka's Chinese-built port of Hambantota, despite opposition from neighbouring India, left on Monday after a week-long stay. The ship has now left the southern Sri Lankan port, said the Hambantota International Port Group, a partnership between Sri Lanka's government and China Merchants Port Holdings. 
Drone images showed the ship leaving port. The ship's next destination was not immediately known. Analysts say the Yuan Wang 5 is among a group of Chinese ships that monitor satellite, rocket and intercontinental ballistic missile launches. India Sri Lanka's India Sri Lanka's northern neighbor fears China could use the port as a military base. Sri Lanka facing its worst economic crisis indicates and in need of financial support from both China and India had delayed the ship's arrival after India raised its concerns but gave in to Chinese demands later. The Pentagon says the Yuan Wang ships are operated by the strategic support force of the People's Liberation Army. Yuan Wang 5 Captain Zhang Hongwang said last week that the ship's visit would deepen the exchange between China and Sri Lanka in the field of space science and technology and promote the common progress of the space industry of the two countries. China says the Hamban Tota port leased by China merchants in 2017 for 99 years is a key part of its Belt and Road Initiative, linking infrastructure projects in various countries. Well, in news from Nepal, Britain will recruit health professionals from Nepal under its first labour agreement with the Himalayan country, officials said on Monday, helping Britain offset a labour gap while Nepal bids to boost remittances from migrant workers. A joint statement by Nepal government and the British embassy in Kathmandu said the preliminary agreement will allow fair and ethical recruitment of Nepali healthcare professionals in the British health sector. They will receive equal rights, privileges, protection and dignity, the statement said. Britain will launch a pilot phase of the recruitment that will begin with nurses, though no time frame was given. And Bangladesh will close schools for one extra day a week and cut off its timings by an hour to save power from Wednesday, as the country battles a shortage after shutting down all of its diesel-run power plants. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's government has decided that schools will remain closed for two days, Cabinet Secretary Khandkar Anwarul Islam told reporters on Monday. The South Asian country last month shut down all 10 of its diesel power plants after Russia's invasion of Ukraine drove up the cost of imported fuel. Bangladesh began daily two-hour power cuts last month, but many parts of the country go without electricity for much longer. The shut plants accounts for about 6% of Bangladesh's total power generation capacity of 23,000 megawatts. Natural gas, locally produced and imported, generates nearly three-quarters of the total. Earlier this month, the government raised oil prices by as much as 51.7%, sparking protest by students and opposition parties in the country of 165 million people. The government has also announced staggered weekly holidays for factories to save power. The government has also placed curbs on imports of luxury goods and liquefied natural gas. And with Ganesh Chaturthi Festival just round the corner, artisans and traders in India's southern Bengaluru who sell idols of elephant-headed Hindu god Ganesha have said they are expecting good sales this time as the festival will be celebrated after a two-year hiatus due to COVID-19 pandemic. The idols are worshipped every year during the 10-day long festival and later immersed in rivers, lakes and the sea. Indian markets have been flooded with colourful idols of Hindu elephant-headed god Ganesha ahead of the 10-day-long Ganesha Chaturthi festival that marks his birth anniversary. Traders who sell Ganesha idols in southern Bengaluru city are hoping good sales as a festival will be celebrated in the city after a two-year hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic. They have placed majestic idols of Lord Ganesha in rows, some of 10 feet tall, each more colourful than the other as they await customers. Devotees put Ganesh idols in their homes, believing that the god will take away all their misfortune during Ganesh Chaturthi, which will be celebrated on August 31st this year. Meanwhile, artisans in northern Agra city were engaged in giving final touches to Ganesh idols ahead of the festival. The idols, made in different shapes and sizes, are always given a coat of whitewash before the actual painting starts. Decorated idols of Lord Ganesha are worshipped during the festival before they are immersed in rivers, lakes and seas on the last day. 
celebrated as the rebirth of Lord Ganesh, devotees believe the god of wisdom, prosperity, and good fortune bestows his presence on earth during his auspicious occasion. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.